Hi, I am Dr. Rasik Shah, Senior Full-Time Pediatric Surgeon at SRCC Children's Hospital managed by Narayan Health. Today I am going to tell you about PUJ obstruction. PUJ obstruction means that's the kidney, that's pelvis and this is the ureter. And if you see there is little narrowing there. Normally what happens the kidney is like that. There is no swelling of pelvis or calicial system and it is normal size and the urine goes down easily into the ureter. In PUJ obstruction there is narrowing at the junction of pelvis and ureter and because of which it urine does not go down. Today most of them 90% plus they are detected on antenatal sonography that there is a dilatation of the pelvic calicial system and there is a swelling of the kidney. So most of the child we can detect before the birth whether they have PUJ obstruction. The second way of presentations is by symptoms which the child will have like pain on the flank because of the swelling of the kidney. Sometimes because of urinary infection they can have fever and pain. So these are few other ways the child can present and very rarely they can present with the large swelling or lump palpable in abdomen. Two investigations which are important include sonography where we measure the AP diameter of the pelvis. The second investigation which is important is known as renogram which can be either DTPA or EC renal scan or MAC scan which will tell us objectively whether that swelling in the kidney has mechanical obstruction or functional obstruction. In case if it is a functional obstruction that that radio isotope clears from kidney into ureter very well. We call it is a functional obstruction and this child needs to be kept in follow up. Some of them will bypass this obstruction as they grow but many of them will persist to have dilatation and will have mechanical obstruction and then they will need surgery. Sometimes the child may have on both sides the swelling on the both kidneys and there is may be associated dilatation of the ureter and then one more mandatory investigation includes micturating or voiding cystourethrogram by which we put a small tube into the bladder, inject the contrast and see whether the urine from bladder or contrast from the bladder goes back to into the ureter which is the, the condition known as vasico ureteric reflux. Occasionally all this can be because of posterior urethral valve which can be detected on micturating cystourethrogram. So the patient where there is a isolated PUJ obstruction and if it is mechanical on DTPA renogram or EC renal scan they need to undergo surgery which is known as pyeloplasty. Now in traditional days means if we go back 15-20 years back we used to make an incision in the flank or anterior abdominal wall and approach the kidney pelvis ureter from there and we were repairing this by doing pyeloplasty using open surgery. Now today at SRCC NH Children's Hospital we offer this surgery using minimally invasive or minimal access or laparoscopy or keyhole surgery meaning we make a small incision at abdomen and approach this problem using this minimal excess technique where there is one cut of either 3.3 or 5 millimeter along to put a camera and to put two more instruments two more keyholes to put the instruments and we carry out this entire operation laparoscopically. The advantage of laparoscopy is there is no big cut 
so the pain is very less when we do it laparoscopically along with the less pain the magnification which we get in laparoscopy is huge 15 to 20 times so when I am putting the sutures anastomosing pelvis with the ureter the precision of the suture is is uh, excellent and that scores over even open surgery or when I use the loops the today most of the children today in Bombay or India undergoes pyeloplasty using keyhole or minimal excess surgery at the end of the surgery or during the surgery we put a DJ stent inside that is known as double J stent where one end is in the kidney the other end is in the bladder and this stent is temporary which needs to be removed after four to six weeks of the surgery so that is a DJ stent and after this minimal excess surgery most often we will start feeding after four to six hour of the surgery child is on full feeds on the second day or first post operative day so the recovery usually is very smooth we usually keep a police catheter and drain all that is removed on second and third post operative day and most of the children if they are doing well they are discharged from the hospital on third post operative day after the surgery these children will need follow up sonography and renogram studies at the end of three months and six months and the results of laparoscopic pyeloplasty are in the range of 98 percent they do well in case if your child is suffering from PUJ obstruction at SRCC NH Children's Hospital we can offer this surgery as a minimal excess surgery thank you very much